there's the 125 minor watersheds of Crow Wing County. Now color coded for how much of their watershed service is protected. Okay, so you can see the egg lamp, the egg region of Minnesota coming in right here, and the northern forest. They meet in Crow Wing County. It's reflected pretty clearly. So let's look at Osawana Key in particular, right there, that particular lake. Very low protection levels. Okay. So then we introduced the concept of, well, the legislature keep tell, telling us, if you're going to get these legacy funds and spend them on these projects, prioritize, target, measure. That's the mantra, over and over again. Prioritize, target, measure. Okay, after a while we start to get it. And so we said, well, let's, they want to measure. Well, let's, let's build a metrics so that pe people can get some measurement. Maybe it's crude and simple, but, you know, so we introduced this concept of the needle moving the needle. So then their second map is land cover disturbance, because that came from the DNR work as well. That's a big factor. And so again, you, you can see that there's more, this land is fairly highly disturbed because it's more agricultural in nature. And of course, the forest up here is much less disturbed. Although it's not the big grand white pine anymore, it's still forest. And, and runoff barely knows the difference. Okay, so let's look at Osawatomakee again, and we see that although their protection level wasn't very high, it's all private land, their, their disturbance level is pretty low. It's forested. So that's good news. Dan, go further. You know, it's, I take what you're saying is there's a lot of cabins built there, but they haven't knocked that many trees to get them built. Is that, is that a fair take? Yes, and, and even more than that, the, the, the developed stuff occupies a small percent of the watershed, the lake watershed. Okay. So what is what they did clear is overridden by the watershed that goes back two, three, four miles usually from the lake. Full of those. So then, but where we do have data, in about a quarter of the county, a quarter of those minor watersheds have data, SECI data from the lake associations. So where we do have data, we're going to use it. The first two you've got statewide, you see. How much land is protected, that's easy. That, that information's available statewide. Itasca County can do that. We've got the map done for Itasca now. And then the second one, uh, disturbance levels, that's statewide data, that's cheap and easy and fast. This is the tough one. Water quality data is expensive to get. It takes time. So you take those three, and here, uh, Osawatomakee has an improving trend. Now, whether it's really improving on its own or it's because there's zebra mussels in the lake, and that's part of it, I don't know. Way above my pay grade. <laughs> oh, you took it easy out there. <laughs> I don't know. It's very complex, and, but there's people working on it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, here's risk classification. Then. You take those three maps and you add them up. What's protected? What's disturbed? What's the data, if we've got some water quality data, what's that telling us? You add them up, and this is what you get. Okay? We did the same thing for the first 400 miles of the Mississippi River a couple of years later, and Mitch threw that on this slide to put the two together. So you can see areas in pink and yellow relatively high. It doesn't mean there's a water quality problem there. It means there's the potential for one, because there's not much stopping it. And then Serpent Lake. Look how that sticks out. Well, it's got Deerwood at one end, City of Deerwood, stormwater runoff, Crosby on the other end. Runoff, small watershed, declining trend. Okay. Hey, Dan, when you guys give this information, to whatever organization is looking for the trend. Do you see that it's interpreted by the citizens that live there to try to change? Where are you at with that kind of thing? Well, I don't know if this gets at it or not, but what we're, all we're trying to do is, is set the table, I call it. Mm -hmm. Provide information. These are high, pretty complicated subjects mm -hmm. and issues. Mm -hmm. and you know, how long would it take the electrical contractor to talk over my head if he comes to my house? Right. About 10 seconds? Right. Be way up here, you know? We're, we're bringing it down so people can understand what we're, what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And then they, 
they determine what to do with it. We don't. I, I, I understand. Does that? Yeah. Yeah, but where, where I'm at is I'm kind of wanting more, okay? So, I mean, we've talked about this in the past where you get a snapshot of data, like we have up here in Itasca yep. County. You know, we got 200 lakes with 10 samples of a lake, okay? Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, is that's impossible to interpret for trend. It's a snapshot. Right. So we've always talked about, you know, getting this data, and you get the data, now you stick it on a shelf, it does no good. Right. So now if we get this trend and we get 13 or 14 years of data, and we can work with the laboratory to interpret the data and say to the citizenry, hey, here's the situation in your watershed and these lakes are on a decline. Mm -hmm. The question is, does it still become put on the shelf? Or is there gonna be situations where people are gonna actually make a change to whatever they're doing, whether it's buffers or whatever. You know, that comes down to pretty much it's up to you guys. Yeah, I know. That's a local call because there's 14,000 lakes in the city. Right. 1,400 would be a lot. There's 10 times that big. Yeah. And so the, the state resources are so, so outgunned and overrun, it's not even funny. If the locals don't care about that lake, why should the state? Well, don't we have that will in help. Southern Minnesota? We'll, so, so when when the locals do care and get involved, well, then we start. Oh, okay, really? Well, let's let's start working on this together, maybe. So I'm not saying it's all local. No, I got. And, and the, of course, the referendum put up the state money. The state money's there. So it's up to the locals to get organized, write a good water plan, so they can compete. So I want to see the money come up. Right. And that's the point for me asking this question in this group. You know, it's going to take some bodies mm -hmm. to get this accomplished. And, you know, it's just like grabbing the data and doing nothing with the data. You can do the trend and tell somebody that, hey, look, you've got to do some mitigation or it's going to turn into a swamp. And if the people don't do anything about it, it's not that the government's going to save the day. Yeah, it's okay. the citizens that are going to have to do the work. At, so, at least be the impetus for getting it rolling and, yeah. and sustaining it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how politics works. The squeaky wheel syndrome, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. so Osawana McKee. Now, Crowing County can say because Osawana McKee is a wonderful lake, um, and it's a Cisco Refuge Lake, Tier One Cisco Refuge Lake, which means it's very high quality water. What's the Cisco term mean? Yeah. That, that's a, a little um, member of the salmon family. Okay, it's okay. A, it's a real high quality forage fish for your big northern walleye and muskie. And they get biggest on lakes that have Cisco because of the high oil content. It's it's not the food service people, it's not the data <laughs> transfer people, it's the okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and so and they're also reflective, they're kind of the old canary in the coal mine thing. They're reflective of really high water quality. And when the water quality degrades, they disappear. Final Farm Island Lake, Aiken County. I was leading, reading the lake report from uh, when R M B uh, put that report together, the, the, so it's about 20 pages, the report. The very last page, the last paragraph, the last sentence, it happened to be the fisheries report, that was the page. It said, Cisco are no longer found in Farm Island Lake. They kill that, you know, and test and see what's in the lake. They're not there anymore, they're gone. Well, a little too much watershed disturbance. That's what happened. So then, this is where we are now with Crow Wing County and Mitch Brinks and the GIS work he does is, here's Big Trout Lake again, that, remember that lake we were talking about before with the declining trend, three foot de decline? Okay, they want to focus on that, like this dark green here, this is the county and state land in the watershed, there's the lake itself. Here's, so this is like a thermometer of protection. DNR says the goal, good goal is 75%, permanently protected, that would be right here. So here's the protected state land, this is the lake itself. This light green here is relatively large tract private land. There's your protection opportunity for Big Trout Lake's future. That's the only Lake Trout Lake in Crowing County. So it's an exceptional lake. It also happens to be the lake, as, I, as a little kid growing up in southern Minnesota, where I went to Bible camp. <laughs> Out of 14,000 lakes, it's that one. What do you remember from camp? I remember how clear that water was. <laughs> it was. It was exceptional. Of course, I can't. Is my check in the mail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
absolutely. So then, so here's their, again, the needle. Here's their uh, protection level. Here's their disturbance level. Here's their water quality declining trend. So we're concerned. This is a conservation toolbox. To, oh, and then this is, we call this a habitometer. A little bit of a joke, but um, this, because, let's say, there's eagles flying over everything in Crowley County. They fly over Brainerd Baxter all the time, you know? So we got a lot of good habitat up here. And there's timber wolves running along the Mississippi River in Crowley County. That's high quality stuff. So every, let's say we start straight up. If you have lake trout, you go up a notch. If you have wild rice, you go up another notch. If you have Cisco, you go up another notch. So that's why the habitometer's over here, and that's why the county cares. I mean, other than that, there's a massive amount of tax base on that lake. And they don't want to lose that either. Okay, I'm going to skip that one. This is, if you want to learn more about uh, Crow Wing County's water plan, Mitch just put this online Tuesday. And you can go in there and toggle these two buttons right up here and look in, zero in on any, all kinds of lakes and what's going on there, and it's, it's pretty amazing. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about the implementation because we don't plan to plan, we plan to implement. And so, well, Rice, Minnesota is the epicenter of the world supply of natural wild rice. So this matters a lot. It's very high quality wildlife habitat, right, Perry? Perry's been involved in this project. This just shows the wild rice lakes. We got this project started with DNR Wildlife about five years ago. And uh, there's this habitat money, right? 90 million a year. Well, we said, well, why don't you give us a, a million or so and, and we'll protect these wild rice lakes permanently. So they, they funded it. And, and so this is, um, we call this Deerwood Rice because there's so many rice lakes in Deerwood County. You know, you, gotta, you can't just call it rice lake. You gotta call it something rice. So this is Deerwood Rice. And this is the Deerwood shortcut right here, blacktop, Crow Wing County 12. Um, this is wetland back here, but this is an upland ridge. It's not a high quality lake from a fishing perspective, there's no fish in it, but with everything else developing, this is highly developable. Chunk, 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 chunk in the lots. It's all upland. There's blacktop right there, it's easy. So this became the first wild rice season in Minnesota. And just by coincidence, my wife was right back there, and I live right there. <laughs> on that little lake. But we don't have wild rice. This is wild rice uh, take protection taken into a Cass County now. This is Highway 371. Bacchus would be right here. Uh, Lind Lake. This bay here is full of rice. And DNR said that would make a wonderful diver refuge for the diving ducks. Because they bomb in, the, you know, they, the ducks have these rice basins all dialed into their GPS. <laughs> they know where they are. And going north and going south each day, they, they, they uh, stock up on nutrients. So this is the wild rice season that we're working on right now. The fellow uh, just passed away last two weeks ago. This was his legacy, was to see that permanently protected. Now his daughter inherited the land, and she's on board, and we're going to get an easement on it. And this is the Pine River coming out of there. Just gorgeous right here. Then the neighbor heard about it. He came in. He wants an easement too. Okay. We did this one last year. This one's done. This Brockway is all rice. This is a fish lake with rice on this end. Uh, Hattie's the same oh, thing. Oh, wait a minute. So what you're saying for the easement is you purchased an easement and that is for rice development. It is for, they sold That's their right to develop. They still own the land, they still pay taxes on it, and they, man they manage the timber. That's fine too, under stewardship plan. But you're not going to grow subdivisions. 